tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight, we escape to a lonely schooner sailing through the hot Caribbean night, carrying a fortune and the heedless passions of reckless men, as John and Gwen Bagney tell it in their exciting tale, The Sure Thing. Before we hear tonight's story, a brief message from the Ford Dealers of America. Over 140,000 delighted motorists are already driving the new 50 Ford. Here is what Mrs. William M. Kirby of Kansas City, Missouri, who breeds the rare Sealy Ham and Dandy Dinmont Terrier, says about her new Ford. I think my new Ford station wagon is just wonderful. It has such style and beauty. I use it to transport my terriers, and they love it. And, of course, it doubles as a passenger car as well. It's so comfortable and easy to handle. I've had station wagons before, but this one is the strongest, safest, and best I've ever had. Yes, we Ford dealers are swamped with comments like that. But don't take anyone's word for this new 50 Ford. Prove it for yourself. Look up your nearest Ford dealer in the classified phone directory. Perhaps you know him personally. He'll arrange a test drive in the 50 Ford. Test drive it for comfort, for power, for safety, for the quietness which is its mark of quality. Test drive it for the new Ford feel which stamps the 50 Ford as the one fine car in the low price field. Before you buy any car at any price, test drive the 50 Ford at your Ford dealers tomorrow. And now we invite you to... Escape! This way, senor. Thank you. If you would please wait in here in the president's office. Fine. You understand, senor, I have not the authority to handle the matter myself. Yes, of course, I understand. You see, a bank draft of two million dollars, it is a matter of such importance. Uh, senor Jose Perez, the president of the bank, he is the only one. That's perfectly all right. I'll wait for senor Perez. Uh, gracias, senor, gracias. Wait. Yes, I could wait. I'd come this far, I could afford a few more minutes. It was hard to believe. Just a short while ago, I'd been ship doctor on the SS Martina, the gilded ferry boat of the Caribbean. And now, now I sat back in a comfortable chair and went over the whole thing again in my mind, just the way it happened, from the beginning. We had just cleared the Straits of Yucatan on our way to Havana when the 23-word message came that started the whole thing. That's the same thing, Doc. SOS latitude 23 north, longitude 85 west, accident case on board schooner Siddon, en route Havana. Urgently need doctor. Can you board us? That all? No answer as to the type of injury? No, I don't get it, Doc. She's standing just off to starboard, and they still keep sending the same message. Lifeboat's ready, Doctor. Coming. Got all your gear? All set. Let's go. As we pulled away from our ship, I could just barely make out the schooner, heeling to a wandering current in the growing dusk. She was a 42-footer, and from her high bow, she sloped away neatly in a sweeping sheer line to a trim square stern. The city. The name seemed to fit her. Aloof and aristocratic. As we pulled alongside, a huge, swarthy fellow helped me aboard. Watch your step. Hey, easy. Hey, uh... Yeah, thanks. Now, where's the patient? He's below. What'd you bring the stretcher for? Who are you? I'm the owner, Felix O'Rouge. You can't take him off this boat. He's too weak. I'll decide that. Come on, Olson. Coming, Doc. We went below, and in the forward stateroom, I found my patient, an old man, uh... and with him a girl. Oh, Doctor, thank heaven you're here. He had an accident. He's terribly... Oh. I've been so worried. Bad shock. Pulse pretty slow. 
You're not going to take him away, are you? No way. No, no, Kent. Easy now. Have you enough oil board to reach Havana if the wind doesn't hold? Yes, I think so. Okay. Olsen. Yeah, Doc? You go on back. Mm. This man is in no condition to be moved. What about you? I'll meet the ship in Havana. We ought to be there in some time tomorrow. Yeah, but the skipper... I'll take the responsibility. Okay, you're the doc. All right, let's have a look here. Oh. Easy now. Oh. No, 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 don't try to talk. Okay. How long has he been this way? Two days. Two days? Doctor, the wound, I'm afraid that... It... Yes, it's badly infected. Who did the surgery on him? Surgery? Who probed for the bullet? Bullet? There was no bullet. He was injured splicing a backstay with a marlin spike. He was what? You see, he was carrying the marlin spike in his hand when Felix had to come about it, threw him off balance, and he fell. I've dug out too many bullets not to recognize the kind of mess they make. It was a marlin spike. Yes? Well, you can yell marlin spike all the way to Havana, but it isn't going to change my report. Report? No. No bullet. Marlin spike. Marlin. Lie back. Now, this won't hurt. Yes, Just a hypodermic. No, 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 dope. I don't want to... But I've got to probe. Can't... You can't take it if you're conscious. No anesthetic. Only brandy. Doctor, give him the anesthetic. Oh, no. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Stephanie? You're out of your mind. Joseph, I just want to save you the pain and the doctor... Get in the brandy. But, Doctor... It's his body. If that's what he wants, that's the way you'll have to have it. Now get the brandy. Oh, thank you. And... Doctor? Yes? Send Stephanie away. Don't want her around me. She went away, but she didn't like it. And I got to work. For the next couple of hours, I was pretty busy. It was well after 10 o'clock when I felt it was safe to leave the old man and go up on deck to catch a smoke. Halfway up the companionway, I ran into Felix on his way down. Well, Doc, how's the old boy? Is he going to kick off? I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I think he's going to be all right. You think? Or do you know? I'm only a doctor. I've done everything I can for him. Now, wait a minute. Where are you going? I want to see him. i got to talk to him. I wouldn't advise him. But since when are you giving the orders around here? Since I came aboard. I don't want him disturbed. He needs to rest. Oh? You got any objections if I get myself a cup of coffee? No. So long as you stay away from my patient. <laughs> I didn't hear you come up. You handle the wheel like an old salt. Oh, I don't know much about it. I just do what Felix tells me. How's Joseph? You've been down there such a long time, I thought that maybe... That he died? That's a horrible thing to say. Of course not. Who is Joseph? Your husband? No, I'm his secretary. Oh, then this is a business trip. In a way. Doctor, what are you getting at? Did you shoot him? Why would I shoot him and then call for a doctor out here in the middle of the ocean? I don't know. And after tomorrow, I won't care. You realize, of course, that my report to the authorities in Havana will be according to my own findings. I suppose so. I don't imagine that there's any way of changing your mind. Is there, doctor? This is a beautiful schooner. Belong to your boss? Yes. I wonder... Do you mind if I take the wheel for a while, I been a long time. Oh, you know how to sail? Oh, used to, back in Maine. All right. Go ahead. Oh, feels good. <laughs> she sure handles like a dream. Uh-huh. Just as I thought. What's wrong, Doctor? Look at that binnacle. We're not headed for Havana. We're headed in the opposite direction. The Sydney was racing along with sails full. But she wasn't sailing due east to Havana. The compass said she was sailing southwest, away from Havana as fast as wind and sail could take her. I laid her on the starboard tack and started to bring her about. The sails bellied out, catching the wind as it shifted across the bow. And then, as they started to fill away, the mainmast boom swung over. Just as I ducked to avoid it, a shot went out. I put up my hand to steady myself against the main boom and there in the wood. Right where my head would have been if I hadn't ducked was the bullet. Across the deck, silhouette in the light of the companionway, stood Felix, polishing his gun with a handkerchief. You shouldn't tack, Doctor, when a man's cleaning his gun. Cleaning your gun in the dark in the middle of the night? Yeah, I suppose it is dangerous. 
I see you don't like our course. I was under the impression this craft was bound for Havana. That's right, Doc. We are. Then why are we sailing southwest? Southwest? Well, that's a woman for you. You can't trust them behind the wheel of a car, and they know better behind the wheel of a boat. Oh, no, Felix. You don't blame me for that. I don't know a thing about a course. I did what you told me. Now, why didn't you do it right? If I'm so incompetent, maybe you'd better handle it yourself. Maybe I will. I didn't know what that game was. The lies, Marlin spite, nocturnal gun cleaning, change of course. But one thing was certain. I intended to get to Havana if it was the last thing I ever did. And to make sure it wasn't the last thing, this was one night I wouldn't sleep. I went down to the old man's stateroom where I'd left my bag to get some Benzedrine. While I was there, I checked on him. He was sleeping quietly. He wouldn't need me. I opened the bag, took the tablets, and suddenly my hand stopped in midair. My hypodermic needle, loaded with the anesthetic that Joseph had refused, was gone. In just a moment, we will return to escape. But first, a message from the Ford dealers of America. Already, more than 140,000 new owners know that the 1950 Ford is something really special. We Ford dealers know it. We want you to know it, too. That's why we invite you to test the 50 Ford yourself. From the moment you get behind the wheel, you'll see and feel quality. A finger's touch brings the great new V8 engine quietly to life, no matter how cold the weather. Before you've driven a block, you'll experience the joy of that flashing V8 acceleration and power. You'll know the quietness of quality in the motor and the sound-conditioned body. Your first touch of the brakes, the largest in the low-price field, brings a new feeling of safety and security. And try the worst road you know. See how the midship ride gives you the comfort and roadability of America's most expensive cars. Any Ford dealer will be delighted to arrange a test drive. If you don't know him personally... He's listed in the classified phone book. Call him tomorrow. Before you buy any car at any price, test drive the 50 Ford. It will open your eyes. And now we return you to the second act of... Escape. Can't you sleep? Are you still worried about the course? See, we're sailing due east. Very commendable. Mind if I take the wheel a while? No, I don't mind at all. Keep a dewy stuck. I want to get to Havana. I watched his truculent board back as he moved across the deck and disappeared below. The moon was as bright as day and as reassuring. And then the sail swung out, covering it, throwing the deck into blackness. That's why I didn't realize at first anyone was approaching until I saw the glow of the cigarette. I tensed myself. My hand clutched at something in the cockpit. It was a wrench. The cigarette moved closer. I waited. The sail bellowed back, and I saw her, full in the moonlight. I have to talk to you. Go ahead. Talk. I'm afraid I haven't been very honest with you. I'm afraid you haven't. I lied to you, and I realize now how foolish it was, but... Doctor, I'm afraid of Felix. Are you trying to tell me it was Felix who shot the old man? Yes, and he made me lie about it. Uh, like you lied about the course. You'll never get to Havana. He's letting you think that you're going there now, but he'll figure out something. I'm sure he will, if that target practice a few moments ago was any sample. Oh, he wasn't trying to kill you. Felix wouldn't kill you now, not as long as Joseph needs you. I, I mean... The... Well, you're not making sense again. Felix wants me to keep Joseph alive, and, and yet Felix shot Joseph. It, it was just a fit of anger, an argument. Felix has a terrible temper. Why, he'd be a fool to kill Joseph. Well, what makes Joseph so valuable? Well... I suppose I should tell you all of it. Uh, it might be a good idea. I told you the truth about one thing, at least. I am his secretary. Only his name isn't just Joseph. It's Joseph Ingram. Ingram? No wonder his face was familiar. He's the big aviation tycoon. Uh, uh, but Ingram was killed two weeks ago. I read it about it in the papers. A transcontinental airliner crashed into a mountain. That's the luck of Joseph Ingram. We were on our way to Washington. He'd been subpoenaed to have his war contracts investigated. He was guilty of sin, and the public was really worked up about it. He was a singe to be indicted. 
And his wife, who'd put up with his selfishness and greed through 20 years of marriage, couldn't take it anymore and left him. But, but... We had got off the plane at Albuquerque to answer a wire from his attorney. But the radio and newspapers obituaried him to death. I know. That's how things happen for him. Apparently, there, there was just no record of us leaving the plane, and they only found half of the survivors. Some of those they couldn't identify. Go on. Well, when Joseph realized that he was officially dead, he saw the way out. He'd been looking desperately for a chance to disappear, and now he had it. He phoned Felix in Florida to have the sit and ready, and we took a train down and boarded her there. Mm, I see. So why do you think I'm on this boat? Do you think I wanted to come? Do you think I wanted to leave my whole life behind? I was forced to come. I was the only one who knew that Joseph was still alive. And now you know. What about Felix? Felix is Joseph's handyman, so to speak. And Joseph owns Felix, body and soul. Just like he owns everyone who works for him. And you? I saw a chance to go further with Joseph than with any other man. Mm. Then maybe the needle isn't meant for Joseph. Needle? What needle? A hypodermic needle loaded with anesthetic. It's missing for my bag. And it looks now like it's meant for you. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, he can't. He wouldn't... I'm afraid we'll have to be more realistic. We? If you'll forgive the pun. I'm afraid we're both in the same boat. There was desperation in her face. I felt sorry for her. She was in this mess up to her neck and she was afraid. And yet it was good having her beside me there in the cockpit. It was pleasant to be with her. Just the two of us. The moon and the sea. Well, anyway, the hypodermic needle was the farthest thing from my mind when I took her in my arms. And then it happened. I felt the sting of it pierce my flesh. Oh, the needle, you... What are you talking about? The needle, you stuck me with it. Needle? Oh. Oh, oh I... Was... Sorry. It was just my brooch. It's, it's always coming up. Brooch? Oh. Oh, I, I thought that... Oh, silly. Here. Fashion it for me, will you please? Yeah. Yes, of course. Why, you're shaking. It's that missing hypodermic. It has me rattled. I've got to get it back. You'll get it back. Yes, but when? How? Right now, Doctor. Like this. She used the needle deftly. In one motion, plunged it in my arm. I tried to struggle to my feet. Her face was mocking me. I grabbed for her, but the drug was warm and deadening. And after a blood moment, I was gone. I could hear them from a long ways off. I came to you slowly, and I lay there listening. I only did what you told me. You're the one who bungled it. It's a good thing I They were both standing over me, working on me, doing everything they could to bring me to trouble to use that needle. Now you've spoiled everything. Why did you have to rush things? You want to know where the money is, don't you? Well, you haven't found out, and now maybe you won't. If you'd only let Joseph alone, but no, no, you couldn't wait. As soon as the doctor was unconscious, he had to work him over. If Joseph dies now, we'll never find out where he hid it. It's on this boat. I know that. Oh, you And know. I didn't hurt him. I just pushed him around a little. Oh, that stupid temper of yours. That awful impatience. You'd think you could have waited for two million dollars. Two million dollars. Now it began to make some sense. Now everything made sense. As long as Joseph needed a doctor and wouldn't tell where the money was, we both lived. But if I couldn't keep him alive... Get on your feet, Doc! Come on, Doc, up on your feet! Feel it, CD! Since when are you getting so touchy? Come on! All right, all right, I'm on my feet. Welcome back, Doc. Now, get below. The old man needs you. He's had a relapse. Stephanie, take the wheel. I said get below, Doc. I'm not in the mood to take orders. Maybe this will put you in the mood. He creased my chin with a short jab. My knees buckled. I swung at him and listened. I saw another one coming. This time I ducked and connected with a roundhouse on the side of his head that sent him wheeling along the wet narrow deck. I started after him. Just as the boat came about violently, heeling over with a lee rail under, I wildly grabbed the guy line just in time to see Felix thrown backwards into the sea. I whirled around. The girl had done it, spinning the wheel like crazy. I dashed back to the cockpit, tried to grab it away from her. 
She fought me like a tiger, but I finally pushed her off right at the boat and put her about. But Felix was nowhere in sight. We tacked around, searching for him, but it was useless. It was an accident. He's gone. You killed him. You, you ought to be glad he's gone. Why? Well, it was either you or him. Yes, your concern touches me. Besides, we don't need him, don't you see? You know how to handle a boat and you're a doctor. You could keep Joseph alive and, until we make him talk. And when we find out where his money is, we can get rid of him. And, and sail away into the sunset, That's huh? right. Just you and me. Yeah? No, thanks. I'll play the original handout in Havana. I don't think so, Doctor. I'm setting the course now. And if you're interested, I'm a much better shot than Felix. I won't hit the boom. The gun glittered in the moonlight, and she was smiling at me. And then I wasn't looking at her, but beyond her. First, I wasn't sure. I just sensed the movement, and then I saw him. Joseph Ingram, barefooted and in pajamas, pulling himself painfully up the companionway, forcing his body to make the effort. Joseph! You ordered too much, Stephanie. My money and Felix's youth. Felix is gone. He had an accident. Uh, like mine, I suppose. If only you hadn't been so greedy. If only you'd waited, you'd have gotten your share. Joseph, you're sick. You are you're... such a little fool, Stephanie. In the heel of my shoe, in my cabin, is a draft on the National Bank of Venezuela for two million dollars. Payable to Barra. So that's where it is. Thank you, Joseph. That's very generous of you. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't been watching. A bullet in the stomach, yet he kept coming at us, slumbering barefooted across the deck like a wounded bear in blue silk pajamas. Not so easy. She backed away from him, emptying her gun into him. But he kept coming. Not no. so easy. No, Joseph. He was at the edge of the deck as he collapsed against her, his heavy arms and a death grip around her like a cartwheel. They swung together over the side into the inky blackness of the sea. <laughs> billion dollars in the heel of a shoe. <laughs> it was in the heel of the shoe, all right. I went below and found it. Just a piece of paper that three people had died over. Two million dollars. Certified backwards and forwards. Payable to bear. In just a few hours, it would be daylight. I could be in Havana by noon, back to the Martina... Back to the dispensary. Back to the endless round of seasick pills, hangover remedies, and <laughs> when I'm lucky, maybe a sprained ankle. Or Venezuela. The choice was simple. There was no risk at all. It was a cinch. It was a sure thing. It was payable to bear it. Good afternoon, senor. Sorry I have kept you waiting. Uh, you presented this bank draft for payment, senor? Yes. Are uh, you, senor Perez? <laughs> that is right. I am president of the bank. Uh, this draft, it is quite a large sum. There's nothing wrong with the draft, is there? Oh, no, senor. It is in order. Uh, good. And you wish us to transfer this money to your bank in the United States? Uh, no. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I wish to open an account here. Oh, but certainly. Gomez. You will make the arrangement for the senor. Uh, si, senor Paris, at once. And now, uh, uh, there is a lady, a country woman of yours, waiting to see you. Uh, uh, please to step this way, senor. To see me? But who? Oh, Joseph, I've been waiting so long. Senor Perez, is this the man who presented the draft for payment? Hey, uh, si, senora. But he isn't. And what has happened to Joseph? Who? Joseph Ingram, of course. Senor Perez, who is this woman? Uh, senora, I, I heard the Sidon had come in this morning with only one person aboard, so I rushed right here to the bank. But you've cashed the draft. What have you done? Killed Joseph for it? Look, madam, I don't know what you're talking about. Just who are you, anyway? I'm Joseph Ingram's wife. Mrs. Ingram? Oh, well, then surely you know he died in that plane crash back in the States. He didn't, and you know it. Joseph wasn't on that plane. He boarded the Sidon in Florida. Now, look, madam, all the newspapers... Joseph, are... I planned the whole thing. 
Those highly publicized statements about our divorce were just a cover-up, so nobody would watch or care where I went. He told me from Albuquerque when the plane crashed that he'd meet me here with a certified draft. He was to meet you here. And I know he would have, if he was still alive. Senor Perez, will you call the police? I accuse this man of murdering my husband. Uh, see, Senora, if you call wish... Call him, call him at once. He must not get away. I will ring for the guard. Oh, oh, yeah. Just a minute. I, I, I didn't kill him. She killed him. She? Stephanie, his, his secretary. And where is she? She's dead. He killed her. Oh, this doesn't make any sense. Then where is Felix LaRue? You see, Felix, he was killed when he... Yes? You see, it was... It was... That is the girl, senor, waiting outside the door. Under these circumstances, Venezuelan law requires me to hold up payment on the draft pending investigation. And, senor, it is my duty to turn you over to the police. Now, look, look, those people, I had nothing to do with their murders. Have you any proof, senor? Have you any witnesses? They were staring at me. They didn't believe me. Of course. <laughs> No one would ever believe me. And it had looked like such a sure thing. I was trapped on a charge of triple murder. Not two million dollars, but triple murder payable to bearer. In just a moment, a word about next week's exciting story of escape. But first, a message from your local Ford dealer. More than 140,000 delighted motorists are already driving the new 50 Ford. Here is what J.B. Spurlock, a salesman, says about his 50 Ford. Anyone who's on the road as much as I am will sure appreciate the relaxing ride of the 50 Ford. You just take the wheel and sail away for hundreds of miles, and you end up almost as fresh as you were when you started. It's not just the comfortable seats alone that are relaxing. It's the quietness of the Ford engine and the fine riding qualities, too. Actually, it feels and holds the road like a much higher-priced car. I wouldn't trade my 50 Ford for anything anywhere near its price class. We Ford dealers hear comments like that every day. But you don't have to take anyone's word for it. Just test drive the 50 Ford yourself. Look up your nearest Ford dealer in the classified phone directory. Or perhaps you know him personally. He'll gladly arrange a test drive in the 50 Ford. Then you can test drive it for comfort, for power, for safety, and for quietness. Test drive it for the new Ford feel, which stamps the 50 Ford as the one fine car in the low-price field. Before you buy any car at any price, test drive the 50 Ford at your Ford dealers tomorrow. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Tonight we have presented The Sure Thing by John and Gwen Bagney. Featured in the cast were Anthony Ross as the doctor, Jeff Corey as Felix Arouge, Faye Baker as Stephanie, and Ian Wolfe as Joseph Ingram. Also heard were Harry Bartell, Ruth Parrott, Ramsey Hill, and Paul Fries. Special music was arranged and conducted by Del Castillo. Next week... You are trapped with a lovely but dangerous woman on your own island of paradise. Trapped by overpowering greed for a huge buried treasure. And from the woman and the greed, there is no escape. Next week, we escape with John and Gwen Bagney's exciting tale of a lost paradise. Treasure Incorporated. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Stay tuned for Pursuit. 10 p.m. B-U-L-O-V-A, Bulova Watch Time. For her, choose the very latest, Lady Bulova, only 4250. General Omar N. Bradley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and Harvard University President Dr. James B. Conant discuss a vital educational issue just 30 minutes from now. WCBS AM and FM.